Hello there, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and boy, what a special early hand bill to show you in San Francisco's psychedelic rock history. Oh my gosh, the third family dog event in late 1965. If you know San Fran's rock history, of course, in the fall of 65, four hippies got together and formed a loose collective for the very purpose of throwing dance concerts, a scene that only existed at that point in bars. They really wanted to get up and boogie and everything and not sit in their seats. So what they did was they put on three events. First you had mid-October of 1965, and they called it a tribute to Dr. Strange. And I blogged both the handbill and the poster, but still there's the image to refresh you. And then the following weekend in October of 65, they had the second event called a tribute to Sparkle Plenty. And there that is, headlining the Love and Spoonful. And then the third weekend was Halloween weekend, and so they decided to just take it off. Um, you know, speculation as to why perhaps they felt that all, perhaps all the talent was tied up that weekend that they wanted to use, or maybe they were just concerned that the people attending would be too busy with their own Halloween parties and stuff, so they just skipped it. So then on the fourth weekend, they had their third and final event, and that is the tribute to Ming the Merciless. Now, if you're new to this, you're a rock fan, but you don't know about those names, you shouldn't be thrown off by the crazy titles. At the core, these were just simply, you know, rock and roll dance concerts in the Bay Area that the scene was really starved for. But rather than just use a boring old, you know, dance concert on their posters and stuff, the Family Dog members wanted to use catchy names and give the whole thing some real pizzazz, you know, which really drew attention and everything. And at least one, you know, what names do you use? Well, Ellen Harmon of the Family Dog was uh, reportedly the real comics book freak, you know, of the group. She'd read them all day long and stuff. And so she, you know, came up with the names Sparkle Plenty and Doctor Strange and Ming the Merciless. And uh, if you're not familiar with Ming, <laughs> there he is. That's right. Uh, part of the Flash Gordon series dating back to the 1930s. That is Ming the Merciless. So he got to be, uh, you know, the third dance concert got to be named after him. That's quite a cachet. So here you have the third and the final one. And uh, the main acts here, as you can see, the Mothers of Invention with Frank Zappa and the Charlatans. And uh, the Charlatans, by the way, the only act to play all three of these early concerts. So what about the crazy artwork, though? Who's the psychedelic poster artist on these, or graphic artist, you might say? Well, the first one I show you, the, doc the first one I showed you, the Doctor Strange tribute, that was done mostly by Alton Kelly, of course, a very famous San Fran graphic artist, and then some by Amy McGill, who was reportedly Alton's housemate, but she was not a member of the family dog. And then the second hand bill I showed you just now, the Sparkle Plenty, was done all by Alton Kelly. And this, the third one, was done entirely by Amy McGill. And, uh, you know, nobody was signing their artwork yet, so it took a lot of research to find this stuff out exactly. But all of us collectors have to thank very much Eric King and his super authoritative book, which is called, take a breath here, A Collector's Guide to Psychedelic Rock Concert Posters, Postcards, and Handbills. 1965 to 1973, and we'd be lost without it, and with it, we pretty much, <laughs> should I say we know everything? Well, let's just say we know a heck of a lot, and so we know that Amy McGill, who's not exactly a big name on the scene, she went into, you know, she didn't stick around the scene, uh, designed this really cool handbill. So it's fun, it's crazy, it's weird, and it's an eight and a half by 11 inch flyer, and it was printed only on white paper unlike a couple of the others, which were also printed on blue and yellow and other papers. And it's got the union bug down in the lower left-hand corner. And then through this, you know, crazy, psychedelicized, acid-influenced lettering, you know, I probably don't have to read it to you, but just real quickly it says, The Family Dog Presents, a tribute to Ming the Merciless, and then Dance, November 6th. Now, what's odd about that is it doesn't give the weekday. Almost everything, advertising events, concerts, and dances, will say Friday, Saturday, whatever the weekday is. In this case, it was Saturday night, November 6th, but oddly, the Saturday was left off there. Don't know why. Excuse me. Then you have 8.30 to 1 p.m., which is a little bit, you know, weird way of saying it. It's 8.30 p.m. to 1 a.m., but whatever. And then the Mothers, no mention of Zappa's name, and the Charlatans. And then it does say MC Don Sturdy, who, by the way, that was just a stage name or a DJ name for Howard Hessman, very important and seminal figure on the scene who starred in the TV show of the 70s, WKRP in Cincinnati. And then it says Longshoreman's Hall, Fisherman's Wharf, no surprise there, tickets two and a half bucks and two dollars. <throat> and then it's kind of clever, it says, 
intentionally, I hope, misspelled, as you can see, may be gotten. <laughs> Perhaps that's an anti-establishment stance there by Amy McGill. Um, at Music Records, SF State, um, UC Berkeley Student Box Office, and The Matrix, the nightclub, that's right, that Marty Ballin of the Jefferson Airplane Co. started, and only opened less than three months. So pretty neat that, um, you know, that's mentioned here on this early handbill. Well, the night itself, I wish I could say was more successful, but actually it was considered the least successful of these three early seminal family dog dances. <clears throat> Excuse me, it was sort of marred by rowdiness and some violence and extra cops and all this stuff. So, you know, that sort of marked the end of this very first incarnation of the family dog dances, which would be sort of borne out again three months later with the emergence of Chet Helms, who would really start going with his posters, FD1 and everything, and going forward. But above all, I'll tell you, this really represents a very historic night also, this uh, November 6, 1965, because, you know, not only is it the first Mach 1 of Family Dog winding down and stopping, but elsewhere across town, none other than Bill Graham was hosting his very first rock dance on the exact same night. Bill Graham, for heaven's sake. And that was, of course, the Mime Troop appeal party with the Jefferson Airplane in a loft. And I'll tell you, Graham, in his, I think it was in his autobiography, you know, to the very end, called it uh, that particular night, uh, the most exciting night of my life, at least in entertainment. So here you have, well, you know, just what an interesting confluence. In fact, a lot of people, when this was over, they'd go to the Bill Graham event because it was just a happening party with the airplane, not knowing the significance of either one of these events, as you never know, of course, when you're in the middle of these things and they're happening. Anyway, a Ming the Merciless tribute to Handbill, eight and a half by 11 inches. Just love this piece. It's great. It represents a lot of history and a lot of fun, that's for sure. So hope you had some fun looking at it today. Thanks for coming by, and we'll see you next time for something soon. Okay, bye-bye.